Zoom. You're good. Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to the Rico Center. Uh, today we are very glad to welcome uh, Vaclav Lassel. That's it. Uh, sorry, <laughs> they, they chose the only non-Czech speaker for <laughs> as a chairman. So sorry for that. Um, we will talk about uh, polymer channels for traveling salesman problem and its generalizations. Thank you, just all. <laughs> so, yeah, I announced uh, I will have present, so I will just uh, go, go go here and there, but. Yes, I will be talking about uh, TSP, and I guess everyone basically knows traveling salesperson problem. So uh, on the input, we have a graph. It doesn't have to be butter, but yeah, you, usually the, the usual problem, how, how you introduce it, is that you have towns where the salesperson wants to sell something, and he wants to travel to each town <clears throat> at least once and somehow he wants to traverse all of them and get back so this is a close uh, close walk i guess um, and what usually happens when you have this problem is that you preprocess the graph so that you find the shortest path between every pounds and create a new edge with this way it somehow makes it maybe simpler to think about because you have a complete graph, there are all the edges. But what we want to do is to study this problem when you leave the original graph as it is. So, so we don't have all the edges, <clears throat> but this forces us to traverse some edges more than once. So if it were a complete graph, you would traverse every edge at most, uh, at most once. We may there are some edges several times. So this is different from, uh, from how the problem is usually introduced. And of course, uh, the problem with all points is known as a Hamiltonian path. So Hamilton is also to us like that. And if we have the weights, that is the traveling salesperson problem. Of course, it is uh, very hard, but let's let's show what I formally mean. So on the input we have weighted graph, and we have some budget. We may walk along the edges of the graph and pay for each edge, and we want to go from some source to the destination, which in our case will be the same vertex, uh, visiting every vertex at least once. In this case, if we started here and want to get here and visit every vertex, well, what do we do? Uh, we will definitely need to visit these vertices on the right. So we'll go through here, perhaps, or maybe, yeah, through here, maybe go here and back just to visit V1, and then go here. And because these edges are too heavy, we will just use this edge twice, this edge twice, and go back to T. We also study some generalizations <coughs> of this problem. One of them is that we have some waypoints uh, that we need to visit, but that may not contain all the vertices. So there is only a subset of vertices I need to visit. In this case, for example, only this vertex needs to be visited. So I will go here and back to D, not visiting B1 and B4. It is somehow, uh, if, if you, you can imagine somehow similar to if you have like spanning tree compared to Steiner tree, you have TSP and subset TSP, you need to visit some subset of it. And one more step, so adding to this, we can add capacities to every edge, which limits us uh, with how many times we may traverse the edge. So in this case, 
In this case, the capacities here are only one and two. Still, we have some waypoints. We need do, do not need to visit every reference. And we will go here to the waypoint, but we may not use the cheapest edge back because it has only capacity one. Mm -hmm. So we must go back through this costly edge. And then if we went here, we again this this has low capacity, so we couldn't use it. So we'll go back with this one, paying paying eight instead of only two. So this is the like the most general problem we will study, and that's the waypoint routing. I will refer to this minute after so I will remind you. <clears throat> so of course it is hard, right? The TSP is NP hard. Even without the capacities, even without the dual waypoints, it is still on PR. So, but, and the most general problem is fixed, <coughs> fixed parameter tractable in TreeWit. So this is the structural parameter, and that's the reason why we didn't want to create a complete graph because we would lose all the structure. So we have the original. If it has small tree weight, we can we can solve it in exponential time with respect to the parameter and polynomial time with respect to the size of the input. And this algorithm is tied under some reasonable theoretical assumptions. So if we had better algorithm, it would break something that many people believe is true. So. <clears throat> the question now is, Within all these structural parameters of the input graph, we know they are FPT. They may still be polynomial, but no one knows how. The natural question now is to search for kernels, which means, which means kernelization uh, is very tied to the FPT algorithms. algorithms. It is some preprocessing function you put the input into the function, it chomps on the input and uh, creates a smaller input here. And the answer to the original problem is yes, if and only if the answer to the uh, kernelized instance is yes, basically. And the important part is that this finished size, this finished kernelized instance, should be, part, should be some function of the parameter. So even though you have millions and millions of vertices at the beginning, if you have small parameter, for example, the tree bit, and if you can kernelize the instance, you will have maybe something in tree bit cube or something like that. So, so the instance, if the parameter is very small, the instance will get very small by this procedure. And it is tied to the FPT algorithms where that we know that there always exists a kernel if and only if the problem has FPT algorithm. But the main question now is that how big is the kernel? Because what the, what the uh, naive way of creating the kernel gives us is exponential within the parameter. So we would have something like four to the three weights squared, maybe. So that would be a huge kernel. And what we want to resolve is that whether it has polynomial kernel with respect to the parameter. So first, let us do a small observation of, uh, of what happens in DSP. So if I look. on the input graph and finds some spanning tree of the graph. Then, <clears throat> and this is true for uh, every graph, if I remove the spanning tree, if I find a cycle, then the original graph could not have been a solution to the TSP. Why is that? If you uh, if you want to have some walk on the graph and return it back 
back to the original starting point. It will be a closed walk. So basically, if you look only on the walk, it will have even degrees on every vertex because you have to get into the vertex and out of the vertex. So every time you get in, you must get out. So it will be even number of like traversals, neighboring some vertex for every vertex. And it needs to be connected. You cannot have like parts traversed here and then teleport and part traversed here. So having some input graph, looking only on the solution on this graph, this solution will have even degrees and will be connected. And within this solution, if you remove the spanning tree, if there were a cycle, you could remove the cycle because the cycle will not break neither of these properties. So it will stay connected because you you like reserved the spanning tree, which is connected over all the vertices. So removing this doesn't break connectedness. And two, two visits of every vertex on the structure. So like by this, you could make the solution cheaper, therefore it wasn't optimal. So after removing the spanning tree, the graph doesn't have any cycles, which means it is at most a tree. So in total, you have within this solution, you may have only 2v minus 2 traversals of edges. Otherwise, you could have a cheat. <coughs> Okay, that, that observation will be important later. Let me now go to the parameters that we studied. I mentioned the tree width, but let, let us show the examples on vertex cover. That is some set of vertices such that if you remove it, you are left with independent sets. So there are no, no, no edges other than within the vertex cover and between the vertex cover and the rest. There are no edges here. And okay, how does the solution to the traveling salesperson look on this structure? So you must visit every vertex in the independent set and it's connected to the vertex color. So you must always have at least one edge used here. It's also possible to use two different edges, but you may somehow feel that that may not be very optimal because if the weight of this edge is cheaper than this edge, I would rather use this edge twice just to visit and go back because it will be the cheapest way to visit. If there is a leaf, you must visit that. That's really easy to canalize. You can just remove it and uh, lower the budget. And somehow we basically have these two types of vertices, some that you visit by just going there and back like this one, for example, and some that are connecting two parts uh, of the solution within the vertex cover. Yeah, so this may be the solution part of it. And as I mentioned, some vertices, you really want to connect them with the cheapest way to the vertex cover. And if they are not important to connectedness, you really want to use the cheapest way. You, uh, either way, you will still visit all the vertices in the vertex cover. So you may just connect it with the cheapest way and maybe remove it if it's not important. <clears throat> we call the cheapest way natural behavior of the vertex. So somehow all the vertices have some cheapest way to connect to the vertex cover, and we would like to use that. But the problem is that uh, that the solution in that case may not be connected. Maybe some of those vertices are needed to create connections between vertices in the vertex cover. As we saw, every edge in these connections is used at most twice, because if we used it three times, we would have a trivial cycle within the solution graph, which is impossible. 
you remember the argument here, right? If we had a sequential solution graph. So if I had three traversals here, I would remove the spanning tree and I will still have one cycle here. So I could remove that and make a solution cheaper. So we may restrict our case to cases to, to solutions uh, that traverse an edge at most twice. Okay, so so mm -hmm. the natural behavior of this vertex is basically this edge. I want to use it twice to satisfy visiting this vertex. But as it may be necessary for this vertex to connect, for example, in this case, right? You, you have some connected components here, some connected components here, and you may need to visit it and go through it maybe several times. Well, we, we somehow <clears throat> we want to make a note on how much more you would have to pay for it. So if I wanted to connect these components, now I'm paying two. If I changed it here and here, I would pay three. So I would pay one more than, than is necessary by the cheapest one. Here I'm paying three. Here I'm paying four. Here I'm paying five. Three. Oh, wait, how much? In total, five, but the natural was two. So I pay three more than necessary. To change the natural behavior, to the behavior which connects these two connected components. And if you evaluate this for every vertex, then you may see that some vertices are cheaper than others. For example, for this, <coughs> connecting this uh, B and W costs one more than its natural behavior, but uh, for this blue one, it costs three more. So if I had to choose between changing this natural behavior to this or changing this to this, just to ensure the connectedness of B and W, I would choose the orange one. And this is the basis of the kernelization. Basically for every pair of vertices, you find <clears throat> which vertices here can ensure their connectedness in the cheapest possible way. You basically, Evaluate it for every pair, sort it, and somehow keep the vertices in the beginning, the cheapest ones. And the rest, you know that they will not be used for this purpose. So you can just connect them with the natural behavior and re remove this budget and remove that vertex. So that will <clears throat> make the instance smaller. Yes, okay. That was basically what I said, right? Uh, as we know that uh, every edge will be traversed at most twice, and we may want to somehow go to the connected component and back. There are only k vertices in the in the vertex cover. So like the number of ways we may want to change the natural behavior is bounded. <coughs> and we have bounded number of vertices for each pair here. So in total. We get we get a kernel with q uh, k to the q vertices and k to the fourth uh, edges. So I guess now it's good time for any questions. And maybe maybe I wasn't clear in some yeah some part. Can you go back? One. Can you go back one slide? Like I don't know, just two. Yeah, this one. Can you remind me what does play number why does play number one work? Play number, number one, right? It's the at most k vertices where k is the, the budget of R is more than two edges. That's quite a trick. That's terribly written. 
the R should be what the C's in this part. Yeah. Of R is more than two uh, edges. Okay. Uh, in the case we saw previously, in this case, mm -hmm. this vertex, if we really had this instance and we had this decomposition into vertex scanner, then this vertex will be traversed more than once. We will need to go here and back and here and back. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, basically, this connection and this other connection, uh, they connect to vertices of the vertex. Mm -hmm. You may imagine this as an edge in some auxiliary graph on only vertices of the vertex. Mm -hmm. If you had a cycle in this auxiliary graph, you could remove this cycle from the solution. If you only count vertices which are traversed more than once here, then like removing the second traversal of this vertex uh, doesn't disconnect it from the solution. Oh, so, so K in this case is the size of the vertex. Okay. Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> so somehow the number of vertices that are traversed in a weird way is bounded. We just remove them at the beginning or, or like no, keep them, keep yes, them. Yes. We want to keep them. Mm -hmm. And but the, the, it's a small number of vertices. And the rest, we keep the vertices which can create the connections the cheapest in the cheapest way possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, at the beginning I mentioned several generalizations. So subset ESP uses only some vertices as waypoints. So we want to visit only the full vertices here. And now the problem is with our approach that I showed before that some vertices here, uh, you may not want to visit them at all. So for example, this vertex, you will just not visit this leaf. It doesn't need to be visited, so I will not visit it at all. But some other vertices, they, they may be necessary for the connectedness of the solution. So what we do is say that natural behavior, the cheapest way to connect this vertex, connect, is to not, not connect it at all. And we pay for this connection its way. So that's we found the technical details that's the only difference between classical TSP and subset TSP. And okay, there, there is also one other thing. Uh, that's this thing. There are many vertices we want to visit, connected only to the non-terminals, only to vertices that we do not want to visit. Then we know that like changing all of them would be too costly. And if the cheapest way is to connect to B, we can just proclaim that B will be visited in the solution and change it to uh, change it to a terminal. Mm -hmm. You know, if it costs us more to change all of the so all of the visits more than our budget. <clears throat> then we cannot change them all, so we will have to visit them. This blows up the kernel of by a small fraction, but that's, that's the polynomial, so we are fine. And the waypoint counting, well, in this problem, <clears throat> as we discussed, the solution traverses every edge at most twice. Otherwise, I can make it cheaper. So we can reduce the capacities of edges to at most two. So the edge has capacity one or two, so we have heavy and light edges. And now the natural <clears throat> behavior of some vertex may be already split. It may traverse the cheapest edge once, but it has capacity one, so it will traverse only once, and then connect to uh, some, some other vertex. So this would be natural behavior in this case. And this brings some, again, technical details and troubles, but, but 
still the approach is quite similar to the first one I showed with the DSP with the cheapest ways to reconnect them and all that stuff that still works. So this was this was hinted on the source uh, on the canonization of the ESP for vertex cover. You can also think of vertex cover as a modulator to independent itself. Modulator is the set of vertices you remove and to to what you are left with. It's usually set. So, and we also um, studied modulator to constant paths. So you are left with short, short paths. Modulator to constant components. So we are left with small, really small components. Vertex integrity, which is a modulator to components which may have size as is the size of the parameter. So you, you remove k vertices so that um, you are left with components of size k. That's, that's vertex integrity. And modulator to forest, modulator to these joint cycles. And yeah, the, these, these classes, uh, these classes somehow, some of them are more general than others. They include themselves in uh, this way. And what you get is, well, for three ways, well, we also have results that show that polynomial kernel is probably not possible. So here, the red crosses show you that the polynomial kernel is impossible. Very understand these number assumptions. And the green ones show you that polynomial kernel and its size. On the left, you have classical PSP, subset PSP, and weighted graphic problem. So that's the classical with waypoints and here with the capacities as well. And that's it. Yes. Any question? Some more version of PSP that I think is famous for the users of PSP. You should look at that. And what is that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll answer the question. No, no. <laughs> so, so uh, you are good. So you want to find a tool again that is close to all the small vertices, but now if you want to convert it, that if you look at any subset of the graph, that the way you travel, that then the, the unit that the unit, the tool that you gave you as a solution must travel every subset optimally as well, not just like the entire graph, but also like we did not. <laughs> I mean, Okay. <laughs> that was like PCP zero zero. <laughs> Other question? Uh, uh, just a small question in this one. Uh, here, um, is it on number of edges or or versus just edges? Yes. Okay. Of, of the final instance, value source size in total. Okay. And you may have noticed the numbers here are bigger. Yes, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, so uh, this relates to the to the basically bit size uh, of, of the input, and we somehow want to transform it so there is some like standard tool, which, however, blows up our final instance four times. Actually. So that's why it's sixteen instead of four. Well, let's thank the speaker.